y'all just tell me when one o'clock actually rolls in and then we'll go ahead and measure this out. I always like it when the stuff is all measured out, don't you? So I am only gonna use a third cup of flour because I don't want to use a whole bunch. I think I could always cook if I was one of those chefs that had, you know, your sous chef prepped it all beforehand. We'll be fancy like a sous chef. Um, I think I'm going to guess right here. You're going to get to do the shady cream because that's fine. Mm -hmm. This is a two cup, by the way. Okay. We're going to put three cups of shady cream. So, tell me when we get there. Okay. Yeah. It's one. Mom, it's one. All right. Are we at one o'clock? No? Yes? No? Yes? No? Okay, let's wait. Two minutes. Let's wait till one. Is your watch or the phone? The phone, you got two minutes. Oh, oh, we have to go by the satellite. My watch and my phone both said <laughs> it was one. So. Well, we'll keep it going. We'll let everyone join on and um, get their stuff together. Um, we've got our pencils and our paper and all our good stuff and our Picasso. And we're ready to go. But, so. Well, well, we'll get all, hopefully everyone's getting all their things together. Um, and I'll go over the list too, and don't worry, if people don't have their stuff, you can just join on and we'll all be good. So, and y'all tell me, we're gonna count it down, we'll get ready to go. I feel like a kitchen experiment right here going on. So, and y'all give me the, I need the little clicker, you know, oh, yeah. we, we need a little clicker. And it says, Action. And action. <laughs> so, are we good, guys? I don't Almost. want to start early. I don't want to start early for anybody. Almost. I'll, although anyone can join in at any time. So. But, got my team over here. Pennsylvania, Alabama, California. Oh, I love it. I'm so excited. So excited guys so almost all right here we'll social mm -hmm. distance high five okay there you go <laughs> <laughs> i'll social distance high five all y'all and everyone there it was on i'm social distance high five. it's one o'clock it's one o'clock it's one o'clock all right is everyone ready for an art lesson today i am so excited thank you so much for joining me i'm kisa and i'm here with chloe and I've got my team over here. We've got uh, Michaela and Gaby and my son Keaton. And uh, we're gonna bring this to you today. I wanna start off with a little bit of an overview. If you do not have any or all or one piece or a part of the supplies today, do not worry. We post the video afterwards so you can watch it again if you choose to use it. It's also a little bit of a two-part art lesson today because we're going to be making the puff paint first. Then if you have little ones that want to go on and just get excited and mush around with the puff paint, let them process play the rest of the lesson, but also leave it on so they do hear some of the drawing tips. The second part of the lesson is going to be a little bit about um, Picasso and a whole lot about drawing hands. And so that's what we wanna talk about today. In all my art lessons, I like to combine Something that involves a little different process, like yesterday we had the vellum sheets, make your own vellum. Something that gets you touching and tactile, different from being on a computer screen all day. And then something that is also technical, something that can, you can put in your brain and think about while you draw. If you remember from yesterday, an artist really is all about how you see things. And so sometimes making you think out of the box makes you see things differently. So we're gonna start in with puff paint. Now, there are several ways you can make puff paint. We're going to use the puffiest puff paint way because I like that the best. But if for some reason you don't have shaving cream, you don't have white glue or flour, um, the flour can be optional no matter what. Don't, just watch the process, think about it. Next time you're fighting the grocery store and getting through all this madness that we're in, Add some of those products to your cart and you can make it another time and watch the video. Um, 
So Chloe, my assistant here, is going, we're gonna start the recipe. The recipe is gonna call for three cups of shaving cream and a cup of glue and anywhere from a half cup to a cup of flour. I put a cup of flour on there just so you would have that. We're gonna mix those all together. We're gonna divide them into bowls. We're gonna add color. And then we're gonna squish them in our bags and get ready to paint. So we'll start with the shaving cream. Remember, it's three cups of shaving cream. We're gonna start with the shaving cream just because the shaving cream is the most fun. And I like to, yeah, fill that, fill that up, fill that up. I like to be very generous with the shaving cream. Number one, shaving cream, like I said, is super fun. Because when do you get to pour shaving cream into a cup holder? And you can, I happen to stick a spatula here, but I realized I didn't put it on the list, so use your hands if you want to. We're gonna get a little messy. And uh, you wanna give me a generous, fill that up about halfway. It's not baking, you don't have to be precise, you don't have to be exact. So, now all this, I used a glass bowl, all this does wash out of a glass bowl, and most of it will wash out of anything. You wanna go ahead and put that in there? Um, because we're not putting any color into this bowl, but if so, when we're done and we transfer the mixture into our bowls, our, our uh, disposable bowls you might want to set some water in there just so that glue will be easier to get out of your bowl so we are going to use I'm going to do glue in here now I happen to be fortunate to be in an art studio where I have oodles and oodles and oodles of supplies the glue is a little trickier to get out of there you want to do that for me can everyone hear me okay in, the, in getting all my supplies, I didn't bring my microphone today, so. And I'm so excited, this is so much fun. Thank you for joining again. So, everyone getting their shaving cream and their glue. All right. And I'm gonna add a half cup of flour in there. I said I always wanted to be one of those, what? like all-purpose flour um, is great. If you don't have flour, don't worry about adding it. What will happen is it won't be as puffy, but it will still puff up. So Chloe, will you mix that all together? And if you have any questions, ladies, will y'all let me know and I'll try to answer them, okay? How much, um, how much glue did you put in there? Oh, a cup of glue, okay. sorry. A, three cups of shaving cream, a cup of glue, and I start with a half cup of flour, all-purpose flour. Um, the flour adds that extra body. If you don't add the flour, you will still get a puff, but it will be kind of this slicky, shiny um, goo, which still is a lot of fun to play with. Trust me. But this gives it a little bit more body when we squirt it out. And it will feel a lot like um, icing in a pastry bag when we get that together. So we have that all together. Let's mix that up a little more. Now, what you don't want to do, you wanna make sure it's all combined. I'm gonna grab that from her and make sure all that shaving cream. We don't wanna over mix it because what happens is it becomes a little flat and a little harder to work with. So as long as once you have everything combined, it's a little bit like, you know, if you're making bread and you overwork your biscuits. I say that like I actually make biscuits. I don't, I don't really make biscuits. I'm just acting like I know what I talk about the biscuits. But I've heard about biscuits. I've heard that that's what happens with biscuits. So if anyone makes biscuits, just tell me if I'm right or wrong on that. So I'm gonna equally now divide into four bowls. So. And there is no science to this other than kind of just Kind of making it divide so and I think I'll reorient so how's everyone doing they're everyone's mixing their stuff they're doing good they're mixing their stuff everyone's good we'll add a little bit more to that okay now once we get that in here that's fairly even Fairly even, are we good? So, we're 
we're going to mix our colors in in just a minute. But I'm going to give a little pause so I make sure everybody catches up. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit. So keep mixing, put it in your bowls, get your stuff together wherever you are. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit about our inspiration piece today. So today, if you notice behind me, there's several pictures of Picasso's bouquet of flowers. It's also called the bouquet of feet, uh, peace, hands and flowers, um, many different things. Picasso, I don't know how much you might know about Picasso. Most people have heard of him. You might think of him as the artist that puts the eyes and the mouths in funny places. You might think of him as the artist who is the father of cubism. Um, you might think of him as the artist who paints really fun childlike images. So Picasso is really the most famous artist of the 20th century. He had so many different styles and stylistic variances during his lifetime that it's interesting to see what he experimented with and worked through. He also made great impressions upon the landscape of art, period. All of us have changed because Picasso was here and what he did. But it's also interesting when you understand what some of the pieces mean. This was made in 1958 for the Stockholm Peace Summit. And the reason why he chose to represent this is because the gifting of flowers is also the gifting of hope. And that's why I thought this was a perfect piece for us to talk about today, because it's actually two right hands. So it's two different people, two individuals giving one to the other. They could also be clasping at the same time. And this is widely considered by the art world and beyond as one of the greatest pictorial representations of hope and community and love and sharing. And I think that's what we all need more of right now while we're going through all this exciting home time together. So that's why we're doing this today. So now, on that note, now that we've referenced our picture, I want to just talk about some of the colors. If you're familiar, the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. That's what he's used. And then he's introduced an orange. So we're going to use those same colors and we're going to mix those. So gel food coloring works best, but I, like you, am using what I have in my house and I did not have gel food coloring. So if you have gel food coloring, you're going to use a little bit less. So now you're going to get to mix the orange. Everyone remember how we make orange? We mix red and yellow. So it takes about eight to 10 drops of liquid food coloring. It would take about half that amount of gel food coloring. So I'm gonna mix the first one. And here we go. I'm gonna come up a little bit closer. Does that show in the? Mm -hmm. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That sounds good. And then I'm going to mix that together. So, I'll do this a little closer so you can see. Now, you want to make sure it's combined, but again, we don't want to over mix. Can y'all see that? You want to just get that color in there. Oh, it's nice and gushy. Don't you want to stick your fingers in that? Mm -hmm. ah, I love it. Okay. Now, if you're just watching and you're waiting to enjoy the drawing part, I tell you, it's still fun to get messy. You're never too old to get messy. So, I'm going to take my blue once I have it together, just so I can call this completed. And I'm going to load it into my bag. Just like this. How's your orange coming? Ooh, that's a perfect orange, Chloe. Does everyone need to see Chloe's orange? So right now I'm mixing it. Does this count as sanitizing your hands if it has, if it has shaving cream on it? <laughs> <laughs> Can't wash your hands too much these days. So, okay. Hey, we're getting a lot of questions if gel shaving cream would work. Gel shaving cream does not work. So, if you have gel shaving cream, 
Um, I'm trying to think. What you could do is you could foam it up, but I think you might have some problems with it. If you already have it, go ahead and give it a whirl, but it's not gonna work as great. What you might not do, if I have gel shaving cream and the glue, foam up your gel shaving cream, get into a foamy lather, then add the glue, don't add the flour. I haven't ever tried that, but knowing what I know about how puff paint works, that might suit the bill today. So I'm gonna wipe off my hands. Oh, you have napkins. I do have napkins. I have napkins right over here. So, there, I can't do anything without making a mess. That's why my apron looks just like this. If you have your bowl and your bowl's empty, now's the time to go run it in a sink and fill it with water and let it set till the lesson's over. Do you so, want to put the, the bowl in oh, we can do it in a minute. Okay. Okay. So, now. Look, they gave us a secondary color. They gave us green, which maybe I'll do green. Would that throw y'all off if I switched one to green because it was right here? I'll keep stick with what I said. I'll throw everyone off if I move around. I get so excited, I start jumping around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Excellent, Chloe. So we'll put that one over here and can you mix the yellow for me so you can use your same spoon right there on my side of the spoon okay got a red going how's everyone doing at home they're doing good it's funny i'm classically trained so when i was in college i don't think any of my professors would have had me mix together shaving cream to make my paint <laughs> But you know, you get out of college, you get into the real world, and you start finding out those things that actually make you happy. And art always makes me happy. I have devoted my life to art. I've done all my training in art. I went to graduate school in art history. Um, I've been a professional artist since I got out of school. It's, it, to tell you the truth, I, I can't go through a day without doing something creative. And you find that even things like this, Golly, they'll just make you happy. So, let's go ahead and do that. So hopefully this is making you happy at home today. Mixing up shaving cream and flour and food coloring and goo and glue. Okay. I told you I don't know how to do this without being making it. Look, Chloe's so nice and neat and I'm the big mess maker. <laughs> This is, the, this is the problem with live. You know, if we could do this on a video, I could do this off camera, and then I could be all tidy and neat, and I could look like I had it all together instead of my gushy bags. But then that way, if your bags look gushy too, you'll, you'll know that we're all in the same boat. Okay. Move that over here. Do you need a hand? Um, we're gonna move all our supplies off. Now, if I had extra, I would have made the green because we could use it for the stems, but we're gonna draw those in today. Um, I really wanted you to concentrate on the flowers because that's truly the symbol that we're talking about, about the hope and the blessing and the sharing and the love. So we're gonna concentrate on that. And then the other most important part, where did I put my scissors? I had those somewhere, we'll grab those in just a minute. But the most important part uh, of this picture are the flowers and then the hands. So what we're gonna do, if you have little ones and they're ready to go, you can take them with their picture and you're gonna squish this all the way down. You're gonna snip off the end like a pastry bag, and then just do it where, just like you were icing a cake, and you're gonna squeeze it out. You may need to get some of the air out of your bags, and you can let those little ones go to town. Now, don't, don't be fooled. We have
have four-year-olds that can love a drawing lesson here that go on for an hour, and then we have 12-year-olds that would rather play with puff paint. So that's why I say these are for all ages, because you know your kids, you know what they might like, you know how long they can sit. At any time, if they get frustrated, let them walk away for a few minutes. Let them take that moment, because a lot of times they'll come back to it. When you're learning something new, and sometimes it can be hard, like I'm jumping in with hands on y'all on day two, and that is really hard, but after I saw your faces, what amazing jobs everybody did yesterday, y'all are ready for hands. I'm like, I'm ready to dive in and go. We're ready to take this to the next level and do some hands. So, if you can gather paper, pencil, whatever you have, we're gonna do some practice sheets and we're gonna talk about drawing hands. You're probably gonna need about three practice sheets. And then if you noticed on the supply list, I mentioned having something that was harder, like a cardboard or a watercolor paper. We're gonna utilize that at the end of the lesson. We're actually gonna draw our hands on there and then do our puff paint flowers to combine those. So, is everyone ready to draw some hands? We good? Pencils ready? Papers ready? Okay, so what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you, a little bit like the face, understand what makes the hand work. So sometimes the best way to do that, remember as an artist, we're always looking closely at the detail. We're gonna put our hand right on here, just like this, Chloe, and we're gonna trace our hand. Can everyone trace their hand, just like this? I have little tiny hands, so I hope those show up okay. If y'all can't see this, let Keaton know and we'll try to move closer and figure that out. So, we've got our hand. Then, I want you to look at your hand. Everyone look at their hand. Do you feel that you might have four knuckles right here? And we're gonna draw circles right where those are. That's this knuckle right here. You have one on your thumb, it's down here. So we're gonna draw those circles. We're gonna draw those knuckles right there. Okay, everyone feel those knuckles? Now, if you come up a little bit on your finger, we've got another knuckle right there. We're gonna draw those above. See on your thumb? Now, maybe you didn't notice this on your hand before, but you're gonna have another knuckle, but only on your four fingers. There are only two knuckles on your thumb. So, we're gonna draw those four knuckles right up here. So that looks a little funny, doesn't it? But, if you watch how your hand, if you bend it slowly and open it back up, those are all the points of bending right there. You see those? When you bend it in and bend it out. Bend it in and bend it out. If you look at it all different ways, those are the connecting points. That's very important for drawing because the reason hands are so hard is because they can change all the time. So you're trying to capture those angles. So you want to know where all those bending points are so that you can get those together. They all connect. Like that. Then, if you notice, if we go to the bottom, you kind of have what would be about a circle right there. So that's the palm of the hand, and then these are your fingers. Is everyone with me so far? Now, we're going to start drawing the hand, but I am going to start right here, and I'm going to tell y'all, do not get frustrated. This is really, really hard stuff. And you have to try it once or twice. You have to try it 1,000 or 2,000 times. You have to try it over and over again before you get it. Now some of y'all I know are gonna be as amazing as Picasso, who got into college when he was 13, just so y'all know, on his art skills. But if you're not, just watch what we do 
and then try it again. You always get better when you practice at something. So start drawing a hand if you get frustrated any time. Just keep with it because I know y'all have this. I saw your faces yesterday. I know that you got this. Okay, so we're going to look at the hands over there. Now that we understand all the points on our hand, and let's just go to a new paper trade. Okay. Are we ready? You can take Picasso's picture down. Y'all see Picasso's picture? I'll hold it up close for you. Okay. So, what we have first, actually, let's put this back up here. What we have first is we have a hand doing this. Okay? Now, that's a hard hand to draw. We also have the plants going in between. So what we're going to start out with is we're going to draw this circle that's here. We're going to basically put that circle in that is the palm. We're putting this part in right here. Now, I see one, two, three, four knuckles. Do you see those? So, and then I see one, two, three, four knuckles. So this shape right here, which has two knuckles in it, is gonna be about like this, okay? And let me show you, because it's not making sense yet. One, two, three, four knuckles. One, two, three, four knuckles. Are you starting to see how those come together? And then it's the ends of the fingers right here. Okay, so that's this part. You see this right here? Now Picasso has gone very simplistic on us, so you can go as Picasso as you want to. a little bit higher than Picasso has it. So I'm going to put it up here, right here, if we came down. We've got one, two knuckles. Okay, let me show you if the wrist comes down like this, and you kind of have a big palm. Here's your fingernails. See how that works? You see how you just made that hand? Now, what you notice in here is this right here is about that big. Does this make sense so far? How's everyone doing on their hands? If you know how to move these knuckles around, then you can end up adjusting your picture in any way. Um, you can end up making them all the way out. Same thing. One, two, three knuckles. You put them out there. So you put your thumb up. One, two knuckles. Anytime you do that and you connect them, the important thing is your knuckles are almost the same size. Your fingers taper a little bit. But what people do is they try to make them really tiny at the top and big on the bottom. If you remember, that they're about the same width going up and even your thumb all the way you do your knuckles about the same width and then you connect those so we've got basically the idea of this thumb holding like this let's go with the opposite direction where we're looking at this outside this is even harder because we were going to just try some really hard stuff today so what we're going to do is here's that palm of the hand basically except it's your outside to your hand and it's a circle but why don't you square after you put your circle why don't you square off this end right here okay kind of give me chloe right here 
be a little flatter end because when I put it like this, we're going to get a little bit flatter. Okay? And then our thumb is coming off basically like this with one, two knuckles, like that. And then here are our four fingers. They're going to join off right here. So we're going to go with our, remember keeping your circles big, they're going to take up the whole time. One, two, three, four knuckles. Now, can anyone predict what's going to happen next? We're probably going to put some more knuckles in. So our knuckles are going to be very close together because it's what's called foreshortening. It's that the shape isn't any difference, but the way you see it makes it look much shorter in space. So there's still this much space between my fingers, but when I put them this way, you can only see little parts of them. Foreshortening. What you can see gets smaller and shorter. So we're going to put, remember, our next row of knuckles, because right here, one, two, three, four knuckles. Now we're going to connect those. You got them? How are you doing, Chloe? Good. Okay. Now remember, keep them about the same size. This is when everybody wants to make those circles smaller. And what happens is you end up going, I did a sheet over here. Okay. You end up separating them and going much shorter. So you want to keep them big and together and keep those circles the same size. There is nothing wrong with this. This is exactly what sometimes it looks like the first time you do this. So just so you know, now we're going to put, we're going to put our next row of knuckles, but it's going to be almost right on top because of that foreshortening, because of that coming together. So we'll put our next row of knuckles. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna join those all together. Now, it looks funny, but this is what's happening on here. One, two, three, four. Don't tell Picasso I drew on his paper. Oh, it was a crank shirt. And then one, two, three, four. It's the same thing. And then you're getting at one, two, three, four. So that's exactly what you're doing here. You just may see the tips that come off there. Because Picasso doesn't have any shading, it looks less realistic. If you were going to shade, you're going to shade as you go away from the light. And then this is what you would be holding. How's everyone doing? Are we feeling okay? Are you feeling like we could put this together? Okay, we're almost all together because we want to put this. So we're going to grab whatever board you have that's a little harder than your paper. If you don't have one, don't worry about it. I do want to let you know that I'm trying to utilize supplies that are in your house this whole time. So if any time you don't have a supply, don't worry about it. Um, just make do. That's kind of what this is all about. Um, great surfaces are the insides of cereal boxes. Um, those cardboard boxes, is anyone getting an Amazon order? Probably. That's a great canvas right there. Don't worry to cut those up. Um, I saw all of your clever ideas yesterday. If you ran out of things, people had dry erase boards, chalk boards. These are things you can utilize. I'm trying not to give you big supply lists so that you don't have to worry about getting supplies. If you want to get supplies, by all means, I'll be happy to make recommendations. I'd be happy to give you things that I would purchase myself. But I think the goal for us here is to share this time together, to learn about art, and to figure out what we have at home and utilize it. So we're gonna grab 
Let's see. This might be big enough. Chloe, I'm going to give you one. And so we're going to draw ours. You're going to have to clip it up here. We're going to draw our two hands and our stems, and then we're going to get to that puff paint flower. Are you ready? Everyone remember all those things we learned? We're going to try and do it without adding the knuckles, but, but thinking about them in our heads, okay? So, Chloe, we're going to look at that, and we see where that thumb comes in, right there, okay? About halfway. See how this is halfway in your picture? About right there. This would have been a knuckle and a knuckle. You see that? So, then we're going to come around. We're going to pretend we can see the rest of the hand, but right here we're holding that, those flowers. Everyone remember what the flowers symbolize? Oh, oh, they can't see me? Here. Yeah, you're in front of, you're the, in front of your, picture. your picture. Sorry, so guys. Sorry, guys. Can you see me now? There we go. Okay. Is that better? Everyone can see it? So now we're going to remember our knuckles. Right here, we've got a knuckle here and a knuckle here. That's what we can see. You see where we are? So we're going to draw. We're going to put those one, two, three, four. And then we're going to come in with our hands. draw our fingernails in there. So remember, we would have knuckle, knuckle, knuckle. Is this making sense? I'm going to draw the hand off. good that you're close because we'll do the puff paint flowers laying down. If this was not a live video, we could do all sorts of technical things that I have no idea how to do, but we could do them. But it's live, so we're we're just, thank y'all for sending in stuff and letting us know because we're watching your comments the whole time while it's live and um, trying to make sure that we're getting the best lesson for you that we can. Okay, great, Chloe, that was fantastic. Um, so now we're going to do this hand down here. We're going to come around. Remember, this is a knuckle right there, but you don't see the rest of it. So there's our knuckle where we're hiding our thumb. And then we're coming around, and we've got our knuckles, knuckles, knuckles that come in there. So these would be your knuckle, knuckle, knuckle right there. about it. This is where right here, a knuckle's here, a knuckle's here, a knuckle's there. I can do it with my little smudging. Can y'all see that on camera well enough? Okay. So let's go ahead and put our stems in. We ready to add some flowers? Now this is the fun part. Okay, I'm going to lay this down and keep, can you see if you can tilt it over where you can see what we're doing on the top? I'm going to, can you see this? I'm clipping the edge. And now, I'm going to make, I mean seriously, is that not fun? I mean that's so much fun. Do you want to make some blue? I'm going to make a center. And I'm going to tip off some orange. There we go. You can make your flowers look any way you want to. But as you're doing it, and it's fun, and you're laughing, and it's gushing, and you're making all those colors, I want you to remember what these flowers mean. 
I want you to remember that this is hope and promise and that this is all things will come together to be good. I'm making a whole bunch of yellow centers because that made me happy. <laughs> um, this is where you can just have fun and get to it. Now the neat thing is this puff paint will dry in about 24 hours and it will be this puffy, if not puffier. So this is where you can have, oh, I'm gushing out the top. Don't gush out the top. It's like muffin top. Um, okay. So it will stay this puffy. It's so neat and tactile. You can even come back in and use um, other paints to paint on top and to paint together with it. You want to try? Let me have some more blue. I think I want some more blue. How are your flowers looking? I think they're just starting to make flowers. Okay. I could play with this puff paint all day long. Mm -hmm. I know, isn't that fun? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you're like, y'all, y'all will have to try it. I know you're over there helping me on questions, but you're gonna have to try it. This is where I say you are never too old to make art. People always think this kind of stuff. They think, oh, I'm too old for that. You are not too old for this. I'm telling you, it's too much fun. So, make as many flowers as you want. I'm feeling like I need a lot of hope and happiness, so we're going to make a bunch of extra. Ooh, I like that one, Chloe. So, while we're finishing up our flowers and you're getting yours together, um, I'm just going to remind you a few things about today's lesson. Today's lesson was about... Pablo Picasso, if you want to look him up online, that would be a fantastic thing to do. You can learn more about him and his life, um, that he went to college at the age of 13, um, that he started the, he's the father of Cubism with um, Brock, who's another uh, Cubist artist, that he had many different styles. Sometimes we love to study his styles because they come in color periods, like his rose period and his blue period. He loved the influence of African art. He loved childlike drawings. He definitely liked all things that had symbolism as well. And so with that note, we hope you've had a lot of fun making your flowers. That really brings us to the end of our lesson today. Um, keep making your flowers while I'm talking. And you cannot have too big a bouquet of hope. Um, and Hopefully you will share this with somebody today. It might be something to give to, to a grandparent or mom and dad when they come home from work. Um, it might be something to tell your sister that because we're all getting along perfectly well while we're all in the house all day long together to tell them you're sorry and you wanna um, uh, give them something that you made. It's also, I want you to practice on drawing hands. Just remember observation, looking, looking all the time. And with that note, tomorrow we're going to be doing more of a drawing lesson. Um, again, we're going to be talking about drawing houses, so we're going to introduce a little bit of perspective. We're going to make it fun by letting you add color with anything you have to add color with. So if you have markers, crayons, I don't want you to get anything special, just what you have around the house, and we're going to introduce color that way. Um, I will be posting a link to making your own watercolors today. We're going to be doing watercolors on Thursday and Friday. So for those, if you don't have watercolors in your house, um, by all means, you're welcome to go to the store and buy some. But remember, I am trying to utilize supplies you have in the house. The watercolors take, um, if I can remember offhand, Cairo syrup, cornstarch, uh, food coloring, and there's something in there I can't remember just off the top of my head, but I'll post that link for you. Um, and uh, yeah, as soon as we're done, we're going to hold our pictures up. Keaton, are you ready? And we're going to leave you with a little Picasso. And my favorite quote, as I said, by Philip James Bailey is, art is man's nature, nature is God's art. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys.